For decades, America has talked about weaning itself off oil, but has actually done almost nothing about it. Now, however, natural gas is emerging as a new power player and accounts for more than a quarter of all U.S. energy usage. A controversial drilling technique called fracking, or hydraulic fracturing, means that previously unreachable gas fields miles below the surface are suddenly accessible. But is it safe? The BBC's Susan Watts has gone to Pennsylvania to investigate. It's America's latest gold rush. Trillions of dollars are at stake. A natural gas boom that could help bring energy security to the US. But it's ignited controversy. People are becoming ill as a result of living near this activity. I've never had a problem with water, never had a bubble like this. Now the industry has sparked a federal investigation and regulators are threatening to get tough. We've had problems with spills and leaks at the surface. We've had problems with gas migrating from drilling. Cabot, again, is doing all it can to be transparent and open with what we do. Vast tracts of North America sit on top of ancient geological strata, dense shale which holds natural gas trapped between tightly compressed layers. Extraction or exploration is underway in 30 U.S. states, but now attention has shifted to a vast formation under Pennsylvania and New York, dubbed the Saudi Arabia of natural gas. I have one at the top of the hill here. Mm -hmm. It's right off the corner, maybe 300 feet, 400 feet. Yeah. Over this corner here, I have one that's probably four, or 500 feet. Bill Ely, like many others in Dimmock, Pennsylvania, leased his land to the gas company. He hoped to make money from royalties. Now he's suing the firm for contaminating his water supply with methane gas and putting his home at risk of explosion. Gas comes off it like an elk itself. Yeah? But frustrated by the company's failure to register high methane readings in his water, he's rigged up a device to show people what's wrong. Any gas coming up with the water will collect in the top of the bottle. If it's methane, it won't be harmful to drink, but it could cause an explosion in a confined space. Is that amazing? Well, some people drink their water, I burn mine. Uh, they tested it and there was no, they said, well, there's no methane here. I said, okay, I took the bottle, shook it up. Held to the guy and lit it and goes, woof. I said, well, that water burns. Let me show you. George Stark is the spokesman for Texas-based Cabot, which has already invested $900 million in exploiting gas in just this one county in Pennsylvania. He says people have long been able to light up their water around here because of naturally occurring methane. Is gas, as a result of your drilling, contaminating the uh, water, the drinking water and bathing water of these residents? Our experts have come out and have checked over our casing, our cementing, the drilling practice itself, the tubular that we're using to go down, and they have determined that there is no there, they have determined at this point that there is no uh, Cabot operations that is occurring, that is allowing for the uh, discharge of methane into the water. John Hanger is locked in a bitter legal battle with Cabot. He says he has strong scientific evidence that links the escaped gas to their wells. We have sophisticated testing. It's the equivalent of fingerprinting gas, and, and we got Cabot's fingerprints all over the gas. He showed us consent agreements signed by Cabot, setting out problems with the cement casings of some of their wells and accepting responsibility for methane pollution of private water. Now, the company says it's signed only under duress. It is an amazing claim by Cabot, and I think it's, uh, it, it, it indicates one more time what kind of company we're dealing with. If any one of those joints happens to meet up with one of those, yeah. that's the story. There it is. In a, in a nutshell, that's it. I met geologist Tony Ingrafia at Ithaca Falls. He specializes in rock fracture analysis and has spoken out against the way the gas companies are operating. He says industrial drilling, whether for oil or gas, is always a risky business. So you have steel casing surrounded by cement, surrounded by rock. If any of those protection barriers fails, we have an open pathway. 
So faults and joints can be a failure in the rock. A faulty cement job can be a failure by which gas or other fluids can find their way to the surface or the casing itself may fail. The deep water horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico highlights the dangers. The Presidential Commission investigating the BP oil spill has said the decision by Halliburton, the drilling company on the rig, to cement that well with a mixture tests suggested was flawed was a key factor leading to the blowout. And back on land, Chesapeake Energy, America's second biggest natural gas company, admitted to Newsnight that it had been forced to change its cement mixture earlier this year. Why? Because problems with its cement had allowed gas to migrate outside the well casing and into groundwater, exactly what Cabot denies and what the industry had denied for a year. But Tony Ingrafia says the problem goes much deeper. There has never been an in-depth study on the impact of this form of fracking, and therefore energy companies are effectively experimenting in people's backyards. I don't accept the notion that that industry can come in and say, we're safe. Oops. Wait a minute, we found another mistake. We found another situation we hadn't anticipated. We're learning while we're doing. So does that mean you shouldn't do it at all? No, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it at all. I'm saying they should have had their ducks in a row first. Much of the suspicion about the natural gas industry dates back to 2005, when President Bush signed an energy bill which granted it exemptions from federal regulations, including the Safe Drinking Water Act. Theo Colborn saw what has become known as the Halliburton loophole unfold around her in Colorado and has been researching the possible health effects. These chemicals at low concentrations can be dangerous. Believe me, it is the part per trillion and part per billion concentrations of chemicals that can undermine your health and especially if they happen to get into the drinking water of a woman who's pregnant or in the drinking water of our children. The industry says many of these chemicals are also found in household products. Yet until very recently, companies kept secret both the ingredients and the recipes of their fracking fluids. A growing backlash has prompted more transparency. But just this month, Halliburton was subpoenaed by the Environmental Protection Agency to disclose information for its investigation. The picture that emerges is one in which regulators seem to be a few steps behind instead of one step ahead. There's one place, however, where the industry is having to wait. Just over the border from Pennsylvania in New York State, where the world's first natural gas well was drilled in 1821, Chesapeake Energy has already leased a million acres of land. But they haven't been able to drill on any of it because the states imposed a moratorium while regulators find out more about the environmental impact. There are many landowners keen to embrace the gas industry. It'll bring money and jobs to the area. The gas companies are never going to give it up. However, these people have to be controlled. Richard Lasky formed a coalition of landowners, 3,000 now, who together hold around 185,000 acres he wants what's best for them and the environment. The gas companies don't want to be unfair. They just try to get away with things uh, as they could at the beginning, like anybody would want to make a profit. But now that uh, people know exactly what's happening, I really believe that some gas companies will negotiate and uh, it will come out best for the both parties. As the gas companies expand their work across the US, Congress is considering new laws to bring the industry back under federal control. And it's not just a domestic debate anymore. China wants to invest in Chesapeake Energy's gas fields. And if gas fracking goes well in America, Europe could be next, threatening Russia's dominance as a supplier. The world is watching keenly. Susan Watts reporting there.